Hello everyone, I want to share an experience I had a couple of months ago that is still leaving an impression on me because of how uh, moving this experience was and how significant and insightful it is about the nature of our levels of consciousness. Um, as a sort of disclaimer, this video does touch on the subject of suicide. If you're sensitive to that topic, best not to listen. But with that said, this is all covered in a, a positive and educational spirit. So this experience happened just before I decided to make the Chakra series on this channel. And it actually inspired me to make a start to the series and also to include information about Jacob's Ladder. Uh, because as you know, if you've watched the series, I talked about the significance and symbolism of Jacob's Ladder. And by having this experience, I realized just how significant it is in terms of the chakras and kundalini and, and spiritual awakening. Now, if you don't know what I mean by uh, Jacob's Ladder, you may recall I used these images to depict Jacob's Ladder in, in the first episode on the Kundalini series. And you'll see how, you know, souls are walking up a ladder, but, and especially in more original depictions of this ladder, you'll see some souls are either falling or being tempted to fall by the darkness or demons or egos, you know? This really represents our spiritual ascension, right? Because we always make attempts or efforts and we reach a certain height or level of attainment, but then of course there is always the feeling of being pulled or to go back down to our old ways. And so, this is what is meant by Jacob's Ladder and our inner personal challenge of spiritual ascension. Now, during this experience and after I woke up back in the physical, the idea of Jacob's Ladder never actually entered my mind until some days later as I was reflecting on the experience because, you know, it had such a, an impact on me and so I eventually realized uh, what it symbolized and I said to myself, wow, you know, this is, this is a real reality for souls in the astral in a very dramatic and visual way. Uh, this, this reality of this principle of, of Jacob's Ladder. And so, you know, we usually use the word symbolic to say that something is not exactly what it represents, right? That's why we have to interpret it. But the funny thing about uh, many more kind of refined astral worlds and environments is that these symbolic references can actually be the living symbol that it is, if that makes sense. The symbolisms can come to life in a real way. So anyway, uh, let me start from the beginning of this experience and uh, the Jacob's Ladder part comes towards the end of it. And as you're listening, you can see if uh, you're able to spot uh, what part of the experience is uh, referring to, you know, Jacob's Ladder. Uh, I'll begin with what I did just before I went to sleep, uh, before this experience, uh, which you'll see is relevant. Uh, so as I was preparing for my nightly deep meditation practice, as I usually do before going to sleep, uh, on my altar I had this selenite obelisk crystal that I got a few days beforehand from a nice spiritual shop here in Ireland. Uh, I'll put it on the screen. Now, I'm not huge on crystals and I don't know much about them. Uh, when I bought this crystal, it was just a spontaneous decision and actually up until now I haven't even tried to research whether this crystal can help with astral projection. Uh, 
If any of you know whether selenite is good for astral projection, uh, let me know in the, in the comments below. Uh, anyway, I spontaneously decided to meditate with this crystal that night. I just held it in the palm of my clasped hands as I meditated, uh, just feeling it uh, and going into meditation. I went into a particularly deep meditation and then I went to sleep and decided to put the crystal next to me near my head. And so during my sleep, I found myself coming out of body and immediately found myself standing on water in the middle of this beautiful sunny city. It seemed like it was Sydney or Singapore, but I wasn't quite sure since I've, you know, never been to either of those places in the physical. Uh, but anyhow, you know, there were these beautiful buildings and architecture and the city was built around uh, a lot of water. I was really, you know, just appreciating and enjoying the view of this city in the sunlight shining everywhere. Uh, I enjoyed it so much that I flew up into the air to get a better view and explore the area. It was, it was uh, just, you know, a very beautiful uh, urban landscape. Now, if you're experienced in astral projection as well, you probably know that it can sometimes be difficult to control the direction that your body is flying in. And I found myself struggling to control myself. And so I have a little tip here, which I instinctively discovered in this experience, which is if you put uh, or if you stretch one fist out in front of you and then just let your energy follow and fly in the direction of that fist, if that makes sense. Uh, basically like Superman. Um, you know, it's amazing how ideas are born from the higher worlds like that and then manifest into the physical such as uh, you know, the I, the story of Superman, such as flying out with one fist, because truly that is a legitimate technique uh, to control the flight of our astral body. And so that's what I did uh, around this city. Uh, it was, you know, just so much fun flying around buildings, going close to the water and crowds of people and flying through interesting architecture. Uh, it was a great feeling to have, you know, this proper control over where I wanted to go freely. And so, yes, you know, if you want to move to the left, just move your fist and arm a little bit to the left and you will go to the left. And if you want to fly up, you just move your fist upwards, uh, etc. Basically using it as a, a driving stick. Anyway, after some time, I had enough of exploring the city and I thought, uh, you know, what else should I do? Well, uh, as I do in a lot of experiences, I decided to go into a higher dimension and the way I usually do that is by flying fast into the sky, into space and beyond, penetrating into cosmic atmospheres, which is always a very intense and enlivening experience uh, because you have to sort of be ready and willing to feel new higher energies as you travel higher if you can handle those, you know, higher energies. Now, sometimes when you fly upwards, you can end up in space, but if you travel in a very fast way with an intent to go even higher, to go to higher worlds like I did, well, then you may end up somewhere very interesting, and, and that's what happened to me here after the intensity of morphing into a higher dimension. And so I lost my vision for just a moment and then felt myself somewhere else, but I couldn't see. So I forcefully said and repeated in my mind, clarity now, and my vision began to come back. Actually, that's the first time I had used that affirmation in the astral in order to cure this quote-unquote 
astral blindness. So, you know, another little tip here, if you can't ever see anything while out of body, uh, it, it seemed to work very well. And as I kept saying that affirmation, as my vision came back vividly, I looked around and I was just in pure awe at where I was and in a split second of shock at the beauty of this landscape I was in. Now, I'll try to find some relevant images as I usually do on my videos to try and inspire your imagination to feel what kind of world this was, but I can't guarantee I'll find precise images. So of course, uh, try to stay with my description. Um, so yes, this this uh, world I was in, uh, I was standing on, uh, and this was the first thing I saw, I was looking down, uh, I was standing on an infinite field of crystals, uh, beautiful, multicolored, violet, chrome, uh, metallic colored crystals, this massive bed of crystals and Above me was a vast black starry sky which uh, seemed to have the Milky Way band amidst uh, the many stars that I could see. So I was in this cosmic crystal dimension which was just, just truly amazing. Um, and to add to this mesmerizing feeling, I also had the almost fearful feeling that I was so far away from my physical body and I had to remind myself that, you know, it's okay, uh, you know, I can go back anytime. So as I grounded myself in this world where there were crystals going into every, you know, direction into the horizon, um, I kneeled down to pick up uh, some of these crystals and, you know, they were quite large pieces, uh, bigger than my hands. And I inspected them. Uh, the colors were amazing. Uh, it was like a dark hue of every color all at the same time. And they glowed and glistened. And I felt them, you know, just rubbing my fingers through them. And uh, to my surprise, the texture was very similar to the selenite crystal I was meditating with before I went to sleep. And if you've ever held a, a selenite crystal before and held it up in front of some light, you'll know what I mean when I say they let the light glow and refract through them. And these crystals in this dimension had the same effect. And so... Now, of course, I'm asking myself, you know, did that selenite crystal connect me to this dimension? Clearly, it, it must have had some kind of influence. Now, I initially thought that I was standing on a bed of crystals, which went into every direction into the horizon. But as I turned around fully, I saw in the distance some buildings with a little path going along the entrances. Uh, so I walked over to the first building and it seemed to be a little shop with lots of shelves displaying books and trinkets. There were a few people inside, including the person who seemed to be the owner, who was a Middle Eastern looking man. And so, you know, I still have this sensation of, of being in this strange uh, world, this strange dimension. So I approach him and, and ask him, uh, excuse me, do you know how to get out of here? He said, you just have to keep following the path outside and eventually you'll find a set of stairs. That's the way out, he said. So... I just said, okay, thank you, and I left the shop eagerly wanting to explore. Uh, as I walked out, he shouted with a friendly smile and, and asked where I was from, and I said, from England, what about you? He said, uh, me too, and wished me luck. And with his warm smile, I felt I could trust him, so I really wanted to find these stairs he was talking about. So as I continue walking on this path, which was a rather large pavement, I realized that this plane was not as heavenly as I first assumed, but it was actually more closer to Earth's dimension of consciousness in a way. 
I say that because as I continued walking, the path started winding and going into these very large caves, and I begin to see many hundreds of people on the left side of the path, uh, and actually talking about it now, uh, I realize mm, being on the left side, all of those people, uh, probably has some significance. And also the fact that nobody else seemed to be walking on the path that I was on. Uh, anyway, all these people uh, were quite rowdy and like partying. Uh, people were, you know, drinking, shouting, uh, dressed very fancily. Um, a few women were dressed a bit too skimpy, let's say, and, well, uh, you know, quite provocatively, and I had to make some effort to, you know, not be distracted by all of this crazy partying going on. So I continued with my uh, mission to find the set of stairs and just kept walking on this path that the friendly Middle Eastern man told me about. And so I keep going, hoping it leads somewhere, while almost feeling like, you know, that I'm in a kind of nightclub or something, as hundreds of souls are just doing what people do in nightclubs, right? Flirting, showing off, screaming, etc. Um, and anyway, finally, the large pavement I was walking on turns into a narrow path, which led to an incredibly high flight of stairs going upwards with some lights at the end, at the top. It also spiralled upwards too, uh, but not a spiral as you'd see in stairs in a home, but spiralled on a much more grander scale, a larger scale. So I eagerly started uh, walking up it, and I noticed that even though there were hundreds of if not thousands of people back at the bottom, there were only, you know, one or two people walking up this path. And they seemed very alone and in their own thoughts too, so the mood started to quickly change into this quiet, contemplative walk. And as I walked, eventually these stairs changed into long corridors winding with an upwards ascent. Now, as you may already have a sense from listening to this channel, uh, when you go upwards in any sense in the astral, you are also usually synonymously going upwards in consciousness too. Now, usually I experience that as a quick shift into another dimension, as I did when I flew from that city at the beginning of this experience. However, during walking up this path, I felt a very gradual shift, which was quite peculiar to observe. Uh, for example, as I walked, I could see out of the windows on the side of the path that I was very high up with the blue sky and clouds outside. So, this is a long path, right? And I'm walking rather speedily as I get a bit restless with wherever this is going, and as I walk, I pass by a woman who's walking a lot slower than me. Uh, she seemed perhaps in her 40s, and I kind of just try to overtake her, minding my own business and, and respecting her space, and as I do, I can't help but listen to her talking and, and murmuring to herself, and She's clearly distraught about something, and I hear her saying things like, All these cigarettes. I I can't stop smoking all these cigarettes. So, you know, of course, she's frustrated with her addiction to cigarettes. And, well, you know, I try to uh, leave her to it as I, you know, just walk ahead and, you know... Obviously, she's just struggling and uh, with whatever she's struggling with, and I just want to mind my own business and continue. But as I walk ahead, 
uh, she becomes louder and I hear her behind me and, you know, she starts almost shouting now, uh, saying, I can't stop, I can't stop smoking. And her anguish starts to come to a peak where she starts shaking and screaming quite loudly and of course I can no longer ignore her now and I stop and you know look behind me at her and I watch as she climbs out of a window on the on the corridor of this path and she stands uh, outside on the edge of the ledge uh, of this path and remember, we're high in the sky, right? And and she wants to jump. She wants to jump off the path. Now, this is really interesting because you can see here how this is exactly no different to a scene of a person in the physical who wants to jump off a ledge and, you know, commit suicide. No difference. Now, I know most of you understand the comparison here, but for those who don't and are thinking, yeah, but you're in the astral, so why would jumping off make any difference there when you can just fly? Well, actually, not all people or not all souls can fly to just any dimension. And most people in the lower astral in particular, or, you know, the quote-unquote hell realms, uh, feel too heavy to fly and ascend, you see. And so, also look at it this way. Her falling isn't just a physical, visual thing. It's something much more significant and, and dangerous than that. She's going to fall in her consciousness and you know, let me tell you, that is more dangerous than just falling in a physical sense and breaking a few bones. We as people really have to understand this because when we see a person who wants to jump off a ledge in the physical, all we can think is, oh, if he jumps, he's going to die. But that's the least significant thing in a spiritual sense. What's more significant is that that person has fell to such a great extent in levels of consciousness that now they are manifesting the act of falling in physical life. So, you know, remember um, the kind of process of manifestation is that, you know, everything happens in these higher worlds first. Everything that happens in the physical first happens in the astral. And so, you see, this is why people who stand on the edge aren't usually that scared to jump, because they've already been doing it internally many times. And the sad thing is for most of these people is that they don't see the point in continuing their life or continuing in a positive way, because they never had the strength to make the upright choice of facing the darkness instead of becoming it, and how fighting it leads to, you know, love, wisdom, inner ascension, and illumination, and happiness, and all of that, you know? So, you see, if this woman in the astral jumps and falls, she's going to experience so much pain and suffering, and, well, if she jumps, she'll die, right? Obviously, she won't completely die, because we can never die, but the progress and cultivation of her soul that she's been working on while, while uh, walking up this path, up Jacob's ladder, will die. Those virtues will die, and she will be again consumed and possessed by her egos until hopefully one day... Uh, she will find the path again and hopefully succeed with more strength next time. But of course, every time we fall, it's always more harder to, you know, get back up again because uh, it's easy for, you know, our ego to say, you know, what's the point? I've already tried that, uh, etc. But anyway, to continue, she's still on this ledge, right? And there's a few other 
people on the path as well who also stopped and you know we're all watching her as well and well this is where it becomes really moving as she became gripped with pure fear and crying hysterically looking below at the abyss that she's about to be consumed by and you know it was clear there's nothing I could have really done as she was so preoccupied with her internal struggle and fight for her soul and all I could really do was observe and as I did in a more acute telepathic way I started to see and feel what she was going through in a you know empathic way and this was just so emotional to feel and you know I could sense that she tried to quit smoking many times before but this time she really wanted to get rid of it once and for all and she knew if she wanted to continue this path upwards she would have to face the pain behind the reason for her addiction. So, you know, some of you might think all of this drama just over smoking, right? But, you know, it goes much deeper than that. And at this point, I started to telepathically send her words of encouragement, you know, because I felt I really wanted to help. Uh, You know, I I said to her, you can do this, Uh, have courage, have strength. And, well, what happened next was quite terrifying. She seemed to reach new peaks in her resistance and suffering so much that in her wailing and screaming and violent contortions of her body, she literally became possessed by her demons. Like, really no exaggeration there. Her body and aura turned black, her eyes glowed red, her skin was tormented with veiny bloody redness and her whole body was shaking violently as if the very depths of hell were about to explode from within her. But all the while she's still standing on the edge fighting from within. And so Amidst all this intensity, I'm still sending her loving messages of support and saying, you know, this is temporary, let it pass, have faith. And as I'm just looking at this violent and terrifying sight of her struggle, uh, it all seemed to come to this, you know, crescendo and of intensity and Uh, eventually, you know, finally, uh, something seemed to have shifted within her and her eyes became normal, Uh, her whole energy just calmed down and she had this expression uh, of inner knowing on her face and gosh, I I can't uh, describe to you how emotional and, and happy I was for her at this point and how in awe I was that she was triumphant. It was just so moving to perceive and feel her fight against her own darkness and how much she really wanted to change and live a good life, you know. And I, for the first time ever in the astral, I think, I started crying. Tears were falling uh, from my eyes, which I didn't even know I could do in the astral. I even wiped away a a tear off my face with my finger just to confirm. And so, you know, it's really something rare to witness too, even in the physical. We all talk about wanting to overcome this or that, but it's mostly talk from our ego, right? Eventually, you have to shut up and and face your fears, face your pain like a grown-up, right? And You have to be willing to feel the pain of your idiocy that you've been in ignorance in for for so long about, right? That's not easy to feel it directly and also process it in a real way. It becomes a highly emotional experience because of the amount of spiritual strength one needs to do that. And at the same time, it's so easy to fall and 
give in to your weaknesses in those moments if you fall back into ignorance and the temptations of dishonesty about yourself. So, you know, I think we can all learn from this woman's struggle in the sense that she identified what she no longer wanted in her life and then she proceeded to face that pain head on and then overcame it. Uh, that's that's a rare thing to see in people, uh, really, these days. So anyway, this woman who is back in her usual form picks herself up, uh, climbs back through the window, back onto the path, and I couldn't help but run up to her in my emotional state and, and give her a big massive hug. And I said, well done. She has this peaceful and beautiful smile on her face and says thank you. Uh, she seemed younger than she did before. She, before she had wrinkles and she seemed about 40 years old. Now she seemed about in her 30s. But she also had these scars all over her face and body from the kind of uh, demonic possession she went through. But inwardly, she seemed a lot more stronger and focused. She still seemed a little preoccupied, probably processing just what happened, but at least she was able to continue on her path with wisdom and strength. So we continued to walk together on the path, but I still felt so moved by what I had just witnessed that I wanted to ask her more questions when, on reflection, I, I should have just left her alone because I kind of asked her a stupid question next uh, because I thought to myself, you know, this is so amazing. I have to share this and her story on the channel, on the Astral Doorway channel. And I felt like an astral journalist who had to report this back. So I asked her what her name was. And as she said her name, I got this strong burst of unconsciousness or confusion in my ears, you could say. I really struggled against this sensation and, and really wanted to know her name, but I wasn't wise enough in those moments to realize uh, I should have taken that as you know, her name should be kept private. But I didn't realize this, and in my fight to listen to her name, I started to lose more and more consciousness and eventually felt myself being pulled back to my body. And so I woke up and wrote the whole experience down. And, you know, even months later, uh, till today, well, I think this experience will stay with me for a lifetime, really, you know. As I said, it really impacted me. Uh, just, you know, I can't really put it into the right words. The emotions I, I felt watching this woman essentially uh, fight a demon from within and, and being on the edge of, you know, committing spiritual suicide by falling off that edge and, and seeing the dramatic pain that she was in and and the crying and the the screaming and what she really went through on an energetic emotional level so uh ever since having this experience i found myself recalling the image of her struggling and finding inspiration in that uh, in times of when i'm struggling in my own life and yeah, it's just been a really great source of inspiration for me. So I thought I'd share that with you, you know, that if we persist with our soul challenges, we can learn a lot from them and proceed with, with strength and vigor and wisdom. And I think we can all relate to what this woman went through, right? especially if you've strived for progress on your own path to transform dark parts of yourself. You know, there's, there's always two paths, right? Two choices. One is easy. It's the voice that says, oh, it's fine. We'll deal with this another day. You know, just smoke that cigarette, drink that bottle of wine, gamble all your money, you know, just to use uh, stereotypical examples of vices and addictions. And the other voice is the hard option, the one most of us never listen to, 
which is to be honest with ourselves and confess what we are, what we have become, which is not easy because it's not easy to see and admit your own ugliness. And, you know, this story isn't to say that specific vices such as smoking is wrong or bad. No, that's not the point, but that strong unconscious compulsions or addictions we feel we have no control over are usually to cover up some kind of pain that we don't want to deal with, right? So the hard path is choosing to walk up Jacob's ladder. When we make that effort, we realize how much we were addicted to our own demons and why. And, you know, the paradox there is that we don't really realize these uh, dark parts of ourselves until we start to make the conscious effort to fight against ourselves. You know, we can only liberate ourselves when we force that pain to emerge. And in doing so, we conjure the strength to deal with it in a conscious and cognizant manner. But that's hard, right? The ego always tells us it's easier to live in ignorance. But the problem is, it's even harder to realize ignorance is actually a much harder and longer path of suffering. Because to just always give in to that, well, you're not really living, right? You are giving away your consciousness rather than developing it. So it takes effort to climb and pull yourself up a ladder, right? But it's very easy to just let go and open your fist and fall. And to relate this to what we learned in the Kundalini series, this Jacob's ladder also esoterically means to climb up the spine, our spinal medulla, and, you know, the 33 spinal vertebrae. Uh, And this, of course, is synonymous with climbing up the chakras as well. And as you can see in this experience, she had a trial amidst ascending, a struggle as to whether she was going to earn a new level of being, as to whether she would pass her ordeal or fall back down levels on her in a ladder. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed listening to this. Let me know and comment below if you got something out of it, or perhaps your own insights and wisdom on these topics came to you as you listened on these matters of our ascension or descension of our levels of consciousness. Uh, Thank you to all the names on the screen for joining on Patreon recently. We have a live group discussion and Q&A in our Astral Doorway Discord group. If you'd like to join, just see the link in the description below. And yes, um, my book is coming along well. Uh, It's taking rather longer than anticipated because, well, it seems it's going to be double the size of my first book. So the editing process is going to take some time but I'll get there. And, um, oh, I'll probably do uh, another live public Q&A at some point for those saying they missed it. Um, And I'll have a better handle over the technical uh, side next time, so it should go more smoothly. Uh, Okay, so yes, thank you everyone, and I'll see you on the next episode.